Well, West Indies going under to Australia in the opening test of the two-match series and now somewhat in danger of losing the first test series for 2022. And that in itself sounds strange, Wayne Holder, that at the end of the year or towards the end of the year, we're talking about West Indies possibly losing a test series for the first time. So I suppose as disappointed as we are with the outcome of this particular test, it says that we are probably moving through a different phase. I mean, what's your response? Well, in context, um, we, we haven't played a lot of test cricket for, for, for this year and uh, over the last calendar year. And uh, But as I said, it is an, a record um, of which we, we, we can very well be, be, be proud. Um, so that West Indies would lose the first test of the series would not have been a, a a big surprise, let's put it that way, to most pundits. But the fact that they were able to take the match into the fifth day, uh, the middle of the the fifth day, and really offer some some resistance, some some defence to the powerful Australia team, I think that in itself is something of a victory. Any particular surprises for you during this contest? Yes, my, my, my major surprise would have been the West Indies bowling, which I thought would have put a much better di di display. The West Indies bowling was was poor, I, I, I would want to say, um, the, in the area of batting, that the, that the, the real spunk uh, came out of the West Indies side, but the, the bowling attack, I guess we had we had some issues there too, but I was surprised that the bowlers didn't do do better than, than they did. I mean, if you remember when we chatted before the first test, I had expressed to you um, on here as well that my concern was the bowling, given what we've seen in the warm-up matches where the bowlers really, even against an, an experienced side on one occasion, um, weren't really penetrative. Um, I was hoping that uh, it was more a matter of the bowlers not really putting in a whole lot in terms of, of, of intensity and that something maybe would have um, changed in the test. That was just a hope. But I did express that concern um, about the bowling. And, and, and sadly, it turned out to be a, a genuine concern and you know one that um, really was on, on point. Um, I'd also express a, a, an expectation or, or hope again that um, Chandapal would have given us some sign that he's ready for this level, and he's done that. Uh, my only thing about Chandapal is that we've had players before who've started <laughs> and uh, then for some reason have faded a bit, and we've not been able necessarily to get them back to where they were. And for me, that's about high performance coaching, where you've got to learn to to be able to help players make the necessary tweaks to overcome the problems that they get when the opposition studies them. Well, yes, because Shanda Paul is now at the start of, 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 a, of a career, a very promising start, uh, we, we must say. Uh, if, if you talk about surprises, uh, his was a pleasant, a, a pleasant, uh, a pleasant happening for, for, for West Indies cricket, and we would only hope that he can he he would go from strength to strength. But of course, yes, you you were correct. Uh, the Australians and the rest of the world would have seen him; they would have had a good look at him. And I know I, I expect that they will be coming with, with different plans. So he has got to be able now to adapt his game, you know, to, to counter what, whatever may, may come his way. And, and as you said, uh, the, the this is where the, the, the coaching and the, the, the whole guidance of the management would, would, would come in also. The, the sad thing is that if uh, when he does go through a, a rut, as all players go through, uh, we'll probably be hearing the same talk criticizing the franchise coaches and the junior coaches. And to my mind, that's a joke. There's no player that you can fully prepare to play international cricket and be able to cope with every situation, not in this day and age. In fact, if you go back as far as, as, as um, Headley, um, you remember that he was pretty much strong on one side and weak on the other. And during a tour, he actually had to, to work on that because they started to exploit the weakness. And he went into the nets, he worked on it, and he worked on it until he overcame it. So it shows that people, no matter who you are, how great you are, there will always be tweaks that have to be made. Desmond Haynes changed his stance, so too did Chandler Paul. And we can go on and on and on. Uh, I, I think we need to focus more on, on that high performance aspect and stop trying to find scapegoats at the lower level. 
And what you're talking about there is the players taking responsibility to taking ownership. You know, the, the, the actual players, they, they have to be able to, to, to buy in. But in today's environment, now we have these high performance coaches and you have this assistance. You know, you talk about the George Shelley situation. I think, I don't know, but the, 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 as I understood the story, he himself made a decision, made that conscious, that conscious decision and that conscious effort to, to counter uh, what the Australians were going to be throwing at him. So I think this is one aspect that we, we, we need to zero in on, the fact that the players themselves have to take responsibility and take ownership. I agree for, with him in the sense own, that... For their own improvement. Yeah, yeah. Well, Lynn, we don't know who advised um, George Hedley or if it was all about him, but let's accept that we didn't have coaches back then. We have them now. And, you know, if I'm accustomed to cooking for myself and I decide that I'm going to hire a chef, it doesn't mean that I can't ever cook a meal for myself. But why am I going to hire a chef and pay him well if he's simply going to sit and watch me cook? So I think that the coaches either need to, to do what they're paid to do, or we can take that money and put it into other aspects of development. But I don't accept that you're going to hire coaches and pay them well, and then tell me that it is only up to the player. The player has to get, I like the term you use, buy in. So therefore, he needs to work alongside and cooperate with those who are trying to help him. But I cannot accept that you've got these well-paid coaches and a whole coaching staff, but yet the expectation is that the players must go to do and help themselves. Some will be able to do that effectively, Win, but they're those who will definitely need help, not because they're lazy or because they don't want to do the work, because they just need help. Well, that 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 is a debate, uh, Philip. <laughs> Maybe of course, it is. <laughs> that 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 we that can take us off on a tangent more uh -huh. or, or or less. But as the the again, there's the old saying: you can take the cow to the water, but I don't know if you can make him drink. Exactly. That, that is also, and that's that where is, and that's where I like the term that you use: buy in. So the, yes. the the cow the cow has got to 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 want to drink, <laughs> so to speak. But remember, you can take the cow. So somebody needs to work with the team. players and okay. get their buy-in. And that's just yeah. my view of it. I mean, obviously yeah. you said use the word debate and there's always going to be debate when it comes to cricket. Yeah. If it were a simple matter where one person had all the answers, cricket would be a very boring sport and we wouldn't be here now discussing the test match that just that, that, that's just gone yeah. and the one coming to come in uh, shortly. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah. so give us some hope, Ben, as we move forward to the final test. Well, if you, you as you said, we come... The, we're going into a day, um, the pink ball day and night test. And I think that our, our fast bowlers, and I'm thinking particularly of, of, of Jason Holden and Alzari Joseph, I think they should enjoy, um, or, or, or yeah, they should enjoy uh, bowling with the pink ball, particularly when the evening conditions uh, come into play where the bowlers tend to, the, the bowlers tend to have the upper hand. So I think this, but, I mean, the Australians are going to be very, very strong. They're very experienced uh, in, in this in, in this pink ball format of the game. So I think the, I think we're going to see a bit of a shift. The, the challenge is now going to be for our batsmen, uh, our batsmen to, to be able to re resist, again, the, the very strong, the very potent Australian bowling attack under the conditions. But I believe that our bowlers, and I am, I'm looking forward to Alzari Joseph. There's something that I, I, I am seeing uh, evolving with him that says that tells me he's on his way towards becoming a real world-class bowler. So I expect a lot from him. Well, I said give us hope, and you certainly didn't disappoint. <laughs> so thanks, Wayne, for sharing your views on the completed test match and for looking forward with optimism. Um, not only to the second test, but I, I think your comments on, on Azari Joseph relate not only to this test series, but his, his career as it progresses. Thanks again, man. My pleasure. Let's now hear from the participants, those directly involved in the first test match. Rossman, before the game, Greg said uh, he wanted the team to back 100 overs in both innings. So I've got there in the first innings, definitely got there in the second innings. Do you take that as the biggest takeaway from the game? Yeah, I thought, although we didn't get that big total in the first innings that we were looking for, I thought that obviously the opening partnership was um, a great sight to see. I thought that the guys really applied themselves, obviously, to this good bowling attack and saw glimpses of what they could do. But obviously, 
we, we didn't cash in on that good start and, and that, that let us down throughout the rest of the game. So do you think if, say, the openers do what they've done so well in both innings here, and in the middle order of fires, you could actually give this Australian team a run Yeah, I think once the um, other batters take a, a, a leaf out of that, but of the openers, I think we will be a force to record with. Obviously, in the second test, we, we've seen how the bowlers are bowling, so obviously we we'll do our homework and we should have a, a better run out in the second test. And just between you and Alzari, I mean, we have that partnership going, uh, especially the way you played Nathan Lyon, you attacked him. Was that just a plan to just maybe put the pressure on? Uh, no, it wasn't really any plan as to just at- attack Nathan Lyon. It was just play to your strengths, stay in your game plan, and if it's there in your area, just score. And just finally from me, like about going forward, like I mean, you're batting in the top order now, you come back in a different half that almost. Does this innings prove that you're kind of ready to get back into that, that half of the batting lineup? Uh, well, I don't like to, to label myself as a batsman or a bowler. I just like to label myself as a cricketer. So whatever job I'm asked to, to do, I just try to do it to the best of my ability. Austin, um, had you found uh, bowling at the bowling screen in Australia is often yeah, well, in the first innings, I didn't really um, have a good run out with the ball, um, especially from this end. I was having a, a bit of problems getting through my action from this end. I wanted to bowl from the other end, but all the fast bowlers wanted to bowl from that end as well, so um, I had to take the back seat. But uh, what I realized, I think that you have to bowl a bit quicker and the pace that I was bowling at in the first inning, so that's something that I really learned from this first game. And does it make you kind of look at Nathan Lyon, somebody who's had a lot of success um, bowling in test cricket in Australia, to kind of um, have a bit more admiration for what Yeah, well, obviously we, we bowled first, so I didn't really get a chance to, to um, see how he bowled on the wicket, but once I saw what he did um, in, in the first, in their first innings bowling, I just tried to emulate that and bowl a bit quicker put a little more pace on the ball along with some revs and um, in, in the second innings it wasn't really a case where I was trying to attack really because the guys were looking for quick runs to, to declare so it was not a case where I was trying to you know what I mean put the balls in certain areas it was more trying to stop scoring than anything else. Ross, did you hope the good signs that came out was that one back this afternoon potentially? Pardon? Good signs that came out was that one back this afternoon are you hopeful he will be able to play in play? Yeah, well, um, I'm not the physio, but uh, um, the word going wrong is that he just had a bit of tightness, so I'm not sure what's going on there, but hopefully he'll be able to um, be out there for us in the second second game. Just back on Bayern and the surface, Nathan's big thing is getting a lot more overspin than sideswing. Um, it gives him that extra bounce, and, and it doesn't really lead to stumps a lot. Is that something that you took away and something you can look to implement in Adelaide because the Adelaide dropping surfaces played a lot more like this than probably the old Adelaide did in the past? Yeah, well, what I found is that th- this pitch didn't really offer a lot of spin, but as the, the wicket deteriorated, I thought he was trying to um, use the rough a little bit more to um, put doubt in the batsman's mind. But I think that, as I said, the, the wicket didn't really offer much spin, so I, I think it was kind of easy. Although he still got six wickets, I, I didn't think that it was that hard to, to really bat him in terms of the ball spinning and bouncing as he usually has it. Um, show his career, but um, he's still got six wickets, so kudos to him. What are the keys as a middle order group after a platform like that? Is it just getting yourself started and, and kicking on a bit better, or what are the things that the middle order group needs to do better to get into that line? Well, for me, I just think it's a case of sticking to your, your game plan and your process as long as possible. And even though you may be scoring at a good rate or feeling in, I just think that you need to just buckle down and focus on what you want to do and don't let the bowlers pull you out of that that zone. Just stay into that as long as possible and I think that's when you will get runs. How much did you think the the wicket deteriorated? What happened in the end then? Well, it was still a good wicket um, up to today, day five. Um, Obviously... It has some deterioration, some um, variable bounce, but that's test cricket. We all know as the, as the pitch gets wear and tear, some balls may um, jump a bit, some balls may stay down. So I just think you can't really play that. You just have to play what you see and just try to, if, if a ball misbehaves, just put out your mind and keep going. Uh, 
Uh, Rostin, just about Alzari. Uh, he looked a little flat in the first inning, but that spell to Manas Labashain, do you think he really needed that to get the, the juices flowing? And do you expect something like that from him going into Adelaide? Yeah, well, me and Azari are good uh, friends. We play in the St. Lucia um, Kings franchise back in the Caribbean, and I spoke to him on the first morning. He wasn't feeling well because, uh, as you said, he looked a bit um, down on pace and stuff, so I spoke to him. He said he was having a, a bit of a headache, but he was still trying to push through, and I, I, thought, I, I admired that about him. And then, obviously, in the second innings, he really, he really got it through, and it was exciting to see. As a bowling unit, to walk away from the test, having only taken six wickets, how disappointed are you guys? And what do you need to change going into that lane? Yeah, well, obviously, we know we need um, 20 wickets to, to probably win if there's no declaration. Um, we're a bit disappointed, obviously, with the wickets that we got, but I thought that the first innings, the guys really, really tried hard and hit the areas. I thought we were a bit unlucky. I thought Marnus um, has a genie in his pocket or something, but <laughs> I thought the guys really, really tried hard in the first innings, but kudos to the, to the batsmen. We, we missed a couple of chances also that cost us those big runs, but I can't really fault the, the bowlers. I thought they really tried, tried it all. Um, the, the wicket was a good one. I thought it was a, a good toss to win. We, we didn't win, but... That's cricket, but as I said, the, the guys gave it their all. They never stopped um, coming. Yeah. And one big positive to come out was, was Chandler Ball coming into the side. What, what do you think the future holds for him? Yeah, well, he started um, very, very good. So obviously, Australia is a tough place to come and play cricket and to start the way he did. I think that shows a lot of character. Um, obviously, his dad. <coughs> had that same kind of characteristics about him sticking in and fighting. So I think that's really where he got it from. And obviously, if he, if he, if he can emulate what his dad did, obviously he would be a legend in the game as well. So I just hope that he can continue in this vein and he takes confidence from, from this first game.